May the 12th, 78th day since the beginning of the full-scale Russian attack on Ukraine. On May the 12th, the occupiers again fired on Ukraine's largest oil refinery, the Kremenchuk refinery. Pavlo Lunin, head of the Poltava Regional Military Administration, reported. Part of Kremenchuk is now left without water supply and electricity. The refinery has been closed since early April when the Russian military destroyed its infrastructure. The occupiers do not stop shelling the territories bordering Russia. In the liberated Chernihiv region, the enemy made several airstrikes on the city of Novhord Siversky. At least three people were killed and 19 were injured. The head of the region said that schools, administrative buildings and residential buildings were destroyed. The Sumer region was also under fire. The village of Novivirki was shelled with heavy artillery at least 20 times. One person was killed. In Zaporizhia, cruise missiles hit the island of Hortica. This is a protected area. As a result of the shelling, a fire broke out. Fortunately, there were no casualties. Russian occupiers continue an active offensive campaign in the Luhansk region. In the occupied town of Popasna, there are numerous cases of missing people as occupiers hunt for Ukrainian activists. Also, in the temporarily occupied territories, Russians loot schools and hospitals. In Kreminna, all modern equipment has been taken out of the military lyceum. Serhii Haidai, the head of the Luhansk Regional State Administration, reported about it. That's how bad you live, surprised by the interactive whiteboard at school. The Russians examined every inch of the school. They took everything they liked from barracks, canteens, warehouses. Orcs hung their rags on the square in front of the military lyceum and scraped the inscription, Glory to Ukraine, on the facade. In the first days of the occupation of Kremina, the Russians also began dismantling hospital equipment. It was taken to their temporarily occupied Luhansk or Russia. Russia exports stolen Ukrainian wheat to Syria. A Russian trade vessel loaded with 30,000 tons of grain was noticed in Syria port of Latakia. This is confirmed with the satellite images. The vessel that was loaded in the occupied Crimea headed to Egypt and then to Lebanon. But these countries were urged that the wheat was stolen so the vessel was refused to discharge. Afterwards, the vessel headed to Syria. Russia tries to hide the country of origin of the grain to resell it. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitro Kuleba, commented on the situation. Russia is a triple criminal. It bombed Syria, occupied part of Ukraine and now sells stolen Ukrainian grain to Syria. I want to remind the participants of this deal. Stolen goods never bring happiness to anyone. Everyone involved in the sale, transportation or purchase of stolen grain is an accomplice to the crime. Torture and murder. This is what the Russian occupiers do at war with Ukrainians. Mykola Kulichenko was shot in the head by the Russians and then buried. The man miraculously survived. In March, his native village in Chernihiv was occupied by Russians. The enemies came to Mykola's house, where they found the armed forces of Ukraine uniform of his younger brother and his grandfather's military medals. This was the reason for the tortures. Firstly, Mykola and his two brothers had been interrogated by the occupiers for three days. Then the executioners tied his arms and legs, blindfolded him and shot him. The bullet hit through his cheek. His brothers died. Then he made the distance of 40 kilometers on foot to his home. CNN journalists showed another proof that the occupiers are shooting peaceful Ukrainians. In the video from the surveillance cameras, the Russian military shot the owner of the car retail station in Kyiv region and a security guard in the back. The showroom was robbed afterwards. The number of atrocities in occupied Mariupol is rising. Planet Lab satellite images of mass graves prove it. The place of mass 
burials in the village of Stary Krim, not far from the city, has become at least 140 meters longer compared to the images taken on April the 24th. Also, now there are more trenches and one can notice excavators. Another mass grave, which is close to the village of Vinohradne, has also become bigger. On May the 12th, the United Nations Human Rights Council approved to conduct an investigation of possible war crimes of Russian occupiers of Ukraine. The Human Rights Council has voted to increase scrutiny on the deteriorating human rights situation in Ukraine stemming from the Russian aggression, particularly given events in Mariupol and several other towns and cities. In occupied Mariupol, the Russian military continues to impose their rules. The city is under an enhanced police regime. The occupiers have set up checkpoints on the streets and check local cars several times a day. According to Petro Andrushenko, advisor to Mariupol city mayor, Russia is trying to accelerate the annexion of Mariupol. By all indications, the occupiers intend to directly integrate Mariupol into Russia, along with the Donetsk People's Republic. The first step is to switch to the Russian mobile code. Also, Russian banks and higher education institutions are to join the DPR now. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian leadership is negotiating with the occupiers to exchange wounded soldiers from the Azovstal bomb shelters for Russian prisoners of war. The Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Nirina Voryshuk, said, We are currently negotiating about 38 severely wounded fighters. We work step by step. We will exchange 38 fighters who need medical aid as soon as possible. Then we will move on. Currently, about 1,000 servicemen are in the shelters of the plant. Several hundred of them are wounded. The bodies of the dead also remain there. The enemy does not stop shelling the plant, which has already become a symbol of resistance and inaccessibility of Mariupol. They got married on May the 5th, the day of one of the fiercest fighting for the Azovstal plant. The venue took place right in the bunker, but their happiness did not last long. The military staff Valeria and Andri had been dating for three years before their marriage. They were drafted to service from the beginning of the war. Later, the couple in love were trapped in the plant surrounded by the enemy. Andriy got a shrapnel wound and the same day proposed to Valeria. They got engaged with the self-made rings made of foil and then got married officially. <coughs> the wedding ceremony took place in the bomb shelter on May the 5th Andri was killed on May the 7th when the plant was shelled again. Valeria remembers the last conversation with her husband. They had been married for three days only before Andri was killed. But in the Azovstal plant, one day counts as one year. She says she will do her best to get out to bury the body of her husband and make their dreams come true. На другие страны мы нападать не планируем. Мы на Украину не нападали. Заинтересованы в том, чтобы чем-то оправдывать свои действия на Украине, мы их презентовали предельно конкретно. Мы не хотим милитаризации Украины. Мы не хотим сохранения тенденции к построению на Украине неонацистского государства. 
когда эти боевики тренируются для осуществления террористических, по сути дела, действий. Мы хотим, чтобы Украина была нейтральной. Фейками полнится эфир, вообще интернет и средства массовой информации в целом. Мы такого рода вещами не занимаемся. Это идет бой не на жизнь, а на смерть за право России быть на политической карте мира при полном уважении своих законных интересов. Здесь никто не собирался договориться о прекращении огня. Денацификация Украины необходима, и с этим медлить нельзя. Мы хотели войны и до сих пор войны не хотим. Мы хотим эту войну закончить.